Now I've been tying a few uh, hedgehog patterns and this is what basically I call uh, the hog hopper because it's uh, basically a hopper pattern in this case it's a detached body version but with the, uh, the hedgehog pattern in front um, this is tied on a short shank or uh, what we call a short shank special which is a wide wide gape medium wire hook now the the size I'm tying is a size uh, 12 the, the body of the hook is equivalent to a size 14 but before I do that we've got to form the body now I'm using a black foam this is a local foam uh, one I've had for quite a few years um, it's, as you see it's got this nice oil slick light look uh, pearly look in the top it's black but you, you can use a normal one it's 2mm thick now I just cut a say it's practically 2mm square if you want to say it round and uh, I like to do is melt the end first before I tie it this seals the end of the foam so that you can it lasts a bit long if you do that now what I'm going to do is just lightly pass the flame over it moisten my fingers and then press it so that it's basically sealed and tapered like I say, a tapered point and then what I do is there's basically a few uh, methods you could use to form the body some people tie it straight on I like to protect the, the foam and uh, first thing I'm going to do is put it between my fingers like that and then come in with my scissors and cut as close to the point or the tip of the or the end of the foam now you can't, it's quite hard to see but basically what I'm doing is controlling the cut between my fingers trying to see the best way you can see this cutting it and controlling so that it doesn't wobble or goes all over the place so you get a nice cut right down the centre to the point and then we simply put the needle into the end of the foam tapered end and there we are that's it ready to basically then tie the, use the thread to this protects it and gives you the shape in the body that you're looking for I'm just going to run the wax through it it's a black uni thread an 8 -oh. now you need a good length of waist because what I do then is I just basically sit the thread on the top of the, the needle slide it right towards the end now I'm keeping a hold of the waist end you've got to do that and then a couple of turns at the back keeping it on top and then what you do is you bring your thread keeping your waist on the needle along the needle the length of the needle anyway do two turns covering that waist end and as well onto the, the needle itself so then we basically make sure it's sitting level and then keeping it together do a couple of turns there's a small segment there then we open it out do two turns again taking up the waist end make sure it's on the top looking at the taper of the, the body we can then stretch it, stretch it out if we need Open them out again, a couple of turns, a couple of turns. Now I usually do around about five or so for this size of flight. And then once I've done my last two turns, then I basically about finish. Now there's the waist end, which I've tied in as I've been top, forming the body. The tying thread end is there, cut them both the same length slide it off the needle and then we just make sure these are reasonably tight we hold the body and pull both ends the waist end and the tying thread so they're nice and neat and then you can see the type of body you get now I usually like to sort of make sure it's pointed so I, I take away a cut slight angle on it there we are makes for a great body and it's very robust, it really lasts, lasts well if you put the, the foam straight onto the fly it starts to get very soft and then it just basically breaks off but if you do that it does last so that's how I form the body for the the bibio now we've got the hook and the vise and we're ready to go now the hook I'm using as I say it was a short shanks 
uh, special. This is the one I'm using, a size 12. Now, as you can see, it's, it's, a, it's a wide gauge, it's a medium wire hook, uh, obviously by full and mill. Now, you can kind of, you, there is a barbless version as well as a bronze version, and uh, the shank is equivalent to a size 14, as I was saying, and the gape's equivalent to a size 12, which is ideal for like patterns, light detached bodies, and hair, deer hair type bodies. And, uh, and if you, it does help to lift the fly a bit higher because the lighter wire. It's a nice, a nice hook. Now we're back to our thread, Uni Thread A in black. You can run the wax through it to get it started. Start at the eye, and we just put down a layer of thread until we're in line with the point of the hook, which is there. Then we remove the waist. Now we've got our form body. Now we tied off here, this is where we're going to tie on. So just do a turn there, but I'm going to make sure there's wax on my thread because you need the grip. A good four or five turns there. And then I usually come underneath a couple of times just to lock those turns in, the turn on top. Now I'm going to trim this, uh, basically a straight cut along the shank towards the end. Now what this does, that tapered cut gives you a nice taper when you're winding your thread. You don't, it takes away the step. So I'm going to just take away, take this up, maybe a better job than that. Just keeping the foam in the hook and then winding up, ready for tying in the legs. Now I've got pre knotted pheasant tail legs, it's obviously in this case black. Now I'm looking for six legs. There we are. Just 90 degrees from the stem of the feather and it'll line the tips up for it. Now all I'm going to do is just run my fingers through first. I like to um, sometimes roll them so that I can see how they're sitting. And when I'm happy with the position of the fibres, the legs. Now obviously you want the legs to come by the back. You want to be able to see them. So we then, three either side of the body, come in with three or four turns. That's fine. I can trim away the waist. Now, when you're making this fly up, the bibio body is black, red, black. Now I'm just going to a bit of, this is some seals fur, dyed black. Just to tidy that area. Now I'm putting it on quite loose. So I'm going to wind it on and sort of twist from the top of the, the fibres and then take away, let the fibres spring out and then stroke these back. Some dyed black deer here, not too much. The length of the tips towards the end of the body, so we hold that. Trim away what we don't need. We come in nice and tight now. We make sure we touch our wax on here. Go through into the cut ends. It's fine. Now we've got some red seals for now. You could use SLF if you want. Uh, I like even mixing both. Now we just want this red segment in the middle. Okay, I'm just going to take my time here. Pull that off there, I'm going to put it through so it's quite loose and then bring the thread to the front. Then I've got some dyed red. Now it's roe deer I'm using. This is from the belly which I've dyed red. Now it's just a highlight. It's good for the heather fly this, this pattern. Too long some of the fibres, you just want to taper into the black so you hold the fibres that you want. We touch our wax here. The reason I'm using the wax at this point, taking away the excess, is you don't want the deer hair rolling. If, it, if your thread's going to slip, deer hair will, will slip on the deer hair so make sure it's nice and tight. There we are. And in the back, tiny bit of black seals for not much. Quite loosely tie, uh, spun on, and then through 
coming through the black with the thread and bring your thread to the front. Just tidy this up. See how it's looking. That's fine. Now, just going to finish off with a black deer here. This time I'm not going to trim, trim it flush. What I'm going to do is uh, cut it much like you would do an elk hair caddis. So I'll get the length. Just draw. I usually draw back the fibres. Come in with the tips. Just see the length that I want. I'm happy with that. Then I come over with a couple of turns. Tighten up. Two or three turns more. Then I get the cut ends. I take the thread into them as I wind towards the eye. Again, this will secure the, the deer hair in nice and tight. Plenty of room at the heads, as you can see. You want a good four or five turns there. Then we can straight in with that finish. Trim away your thread. Cut ends, just bring them towards the front. Rotate them, just rotate my vice so I can find them. Now you want to cut these in the angle. I use the, the eye. So I usually hold the end, come up, trim, then I just tap it with my finger, draw them back, and there we are. Now all I have to do is give it a varnish. Turn it the head, just then get a dubbing needle. Make sure the eye is clean. And there we are, and that's the Bibio Hog Hopper. It's a great wee fly. And uh, fish it as a dry, fish it subsurface, it works just as well. I was fishing it last night and uh, I was fishing it through the waves and it was sinking and coming up, sinking and coming up. And I uh, had some nice fish on it so. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice pattern. The bibio pattern is good. And if, for it, say, the body sort did fall off, you would still have a nice hopper pattern. It would still work away. Uh, though it is, you'll find that quite robust. So I hope you enjoyed that.